Alright, it's the final video of the month, and I've possibly saved the best until last. It's Ring of the Hawk Season 3, and we currently have the Hardy Boys in TNA as the champions. Ring of the Hawk is the show where we watch back a short run of a wrestler's run with a company and then shove them a final grade to see if they could do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K. Today's video was also a Patreon request by Czech Haas. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. And of course, if you know a wrestler who could do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, ha ha! Shove their name in the comments, Jack! Okay, okay, it's Ric Flair. Did he make the girls care? So this will just be a short WWF run from 91 to 93. But on a side note, I've always thought that Ric Flair was a member of the Grey Crew, but apparently it's meant to be blonde. Did anyone else feel the same way as the Hawk? Flair first appears back in the WWF at the start of September 1991. Bobby Heenan gives him a big introduction and they even roll out the red carpet for Flair. He has the big WCW gold belt with him, which is regarded as quite a controversial moment. WCW had wanted to turn Flair into Spartacus, as Jim Hurd didn't see him as a draw anymore. People didn't like Flair taking the belt with him to the WWF and not dropping it to anyone. Flair's argument was that he was made to pay a deposit for the belt in the first place, which had not been paid back. It was $25,000. He keeps throwing out challenges to Hogan and Roddy Piper, and Flair's a heel. Match 1, Wrestling Challenge. Ric Flair, who was billed as the self-proclaimed world champion, versus Jobber Jim Powers. Despite Flair's calm and confident attitude, it's Jim Powers with the first knockdown. They start airing a Flair promo. <laughs> they only bother to record audio though, so they just show the belt. He's gunning for Hogan and Piper again. Flair comes back at Powers with a back body drop. Now it's a backdrop suplex, and moments later Flair wins with a figure four leg lock. It's a one minute match, so not much to say. It's a D. Match two, superstars. Jobber Ron Cumberledge versus Ric Flair. Piper isn't impressed with Ric Flair's callouts. Flair takes the job down straight away of a single leg and boots him. Some standard Ric Flair chops follow which aren't getting the woos they would in the modern age. Ric Flair does a snap mirror into a knee drop. Nice knee breaker from Flair now, he holds him up for ages. And of course that leads to the dreaded figure four. It's just to see, at least he looks like a big deal. We gotta get some of these job matches out of the way before we get more serious. Match 3, Battle Royal at the Albert Hall. Interesting to see a young William Regal working a dart match in 1991 on this show. Because this, of course, is Regal's hometown of England. <laughs> it's a singles match. Tito Santana versus Ric Flair. Massive crowd noise for Flair in the Albert Hall. It's not a positive one, though. The referee holds the belt up even though it's not on the line. Flair shunts him in the corner and gives him a big woo in the face. Santana copies the nature boy. Big shoulder block from Tito gets a big fan reaction. Man, how times have changed. Flair returns to the ring and starts working on the arm. It's basic stuff, but he gets a lot out of a little. This goes on for a while until Tito starts getting angry. Tito starts smacking him in the face and then he back body drops him. He throws some more drop kicks which causes Flair to take his first Flair bump in the WWF. Ric Flair dumps his nappy and leaves the ring. On the outside, Flair throws him into the Union Jack and returns to the ring. Flair's messing around and Tito dives into the ring with a sunset flip. He plays with the crowd for ages before eventually going down. It's just a two. Flair starts clinging onto the ropes in fear. Santana picks him up and drops him to the mat. It's now Tito Santana all over the Nature Boy's leg. Santana pauses the onslaught for a minute, which allows Flair to do a double leg and make the pin. His feet are on the ropes, but it's just a two. Santana tries 10 punches in the corner, which is a bad decision when Flair drops his nutsack on his knee. Now Flair drops his knee on his face and yet again makes a pin using the ropes. The ref catches him out. Now it's a snap mirror and once again he uses the ropes. Flair starts screaming shut up at the crowd. His antics are highly entertaining. Santana starts to come back and sends Flair into the corner. He rolls up the turnbuckle but Tito clotheslines Flair on the apron. Big suplex back into the ring by Tito. Flair starts screaming and begging the crowd and they're going crazy. We get a test of strength backslide which Tito eventually wins but just a two. It's getting more serious now. Flair hits the back suplex and gets the figure four leg lock locked in. Ric Flair uses the ropes for leverage but the ref eventually figures it out because the ropes are shaking. After a very long time, Tito turns the hold over. He's in too much pain to hold onto it though. Santana is now limping around as Flair creeps around after him in the ring like a pantomime villain. Tito keeps smacking him and sends Flair out the ring again. Big scoop slam on the outside from Tito. We come back to the ring with Flair trying to dive but he's caught and thrown. Just a two. He keeps going with a bunch of clotheslines and a big flying forearm. Flair gets his foot up on the rope. Santana with a nice roll up in the corner now but Flair turns it around and holds his knickers and that my friends is the free. Pretty fun, if anything it was more about Flair's funny antics and the reactions he was getting from the crowd. 
By 1991 standards, I give it a B. Match 4, 20-man battle royal later that same night. Piper goes straight for Flair before the bells even sounded. The comrades team are confused to see Piper chasing Flair around the ring. Nobody knows if he's eliminated or not. The only thing I'm sure on is that Piper is destroying him. Piper sends him back to the ring, so I assume he's not eliminated. Flair and Piper do eventually separate. It's cool to see Flair brawling with a young Shawn Michaels and poking his eyelid. It doesn't last long and Flair returns to Piper. Animal connects on Flair with a big gorilla press slam. He's not too hurt from that and he fights Piper more. Check out these ridiculous looking quick punches from Piper. Actually, I've changed my mind, they're cool. Then Piper throws Flair out the ring. Oh, not a single elimination. The match is won by British Bulldog. This would have been an S for Flair, but he did at least outlast 10 other guys, so let's give him a D. Match 5 Superstars, Jim the Anvil Nightfart versus Ric Flair. The Anvil back body drops him out of the corner and flattens nature with a clothesline. Anvil misses his slow motion knee in the corner, and now Flair zones in on the leg. Despite barely doing anything, Flair puts the figure 4 on and it's over. Flair carries on assaulting his leg after the bell, because he's a dick I guess. They keep asking if he can beat Hogan, but I don't think a match has been assigned yet. Hated this one, it's an S. Match 6, well I guess that Hogan match will have to wait. WWF at MSG. Ric Flair with Bobby Heenan. Strangely he's getting standing cheers now. He's taking on Rowdy Roddy Piper. Flair is screwing around for ages and it just annoys Piper who slaps Flair hard. Piper tells the ref to get out of the way and sits him in the corner. Piper just doesn't want to wrestle, he just wants to smack. Piper's strike combos are legitimately getting some of the loudest crowd reactions I've ever heard. Flair tries to dump in his nappy, but Piper won't let him dump and follows him. Flair keeps getting destroyed. They come back to the ring where Flair lands a lucky punch which turns the match. Ric Flair drops the knee and moves to the submissions. Flair sits on him for a two, but he's bridged up and Flair's almost rolled up. Flair throws him out of the ring, not once, not twice, but thrice, and it sure wasn't nice. Piper just keeps aggressively storming back into the ring, this is great. I truly believe these two men hate each other. Back in the ring, Ric Flair takes a dangerous looking back body drop, followed by a beautiful knee lift. Love Ric Flair's selling here. Every time Flair tries to dump, Piper is straight back on him. Flair gets 10 punches in the corner and Piper tries to bulldog, but instead it's a ref bump. Roddy Piper has it won with a small package, but no ref. Another ref appears just as Flair is almost again beaten. Flair keeps rolling, but he's smacked down. A steel chair comes into play and Flair lightly hits Piper with it. Great timing for the second ref to check on the first. Flair turns a sleeper into a back suplex as both men are down exhausted. Ric Flair's first up from that and he tries a dive, but instead he's thrown across the ring. Piper's straight back up and he keeps challenging Flair to hit him. Flair has no chance when they're exchanging blows. Piper gives Flair a net breaker. Unfortunately, Roddy Piper has snapped and he grabs a chair. He tries twice to use it, but he's blocked and falls down. Flair flops on him with his feet on the ropes, and that is the three. Piper's a bad loser and keeps on the attack. He does the lightest chair shot to the referee and he hits Flair a few times too. A great match. I can't understand or explain just how much mileage they get out of something so little. I don't think this feud's over. It's an A from the Hawk. Match 7, Superstars, Ric Flair with Mr. Perfect. They're doing this thing where they video distort the belt. Flair takes on Jobber Dale Wolf. Well, this one's over in the time it takes the Hawk to remove my phone to get girl's number. The sum total of this match is a snap mirror, a knee drop, a Mr. Perfect slap, a back suplex, and it's over with the figure four. It's a D, there isn't much to say about job matches. Match 8, Survivor Series 1991 opener, 8-man tag, DBRC, Mountie, Warlord and Ric Flair with Mr. Perfect versus Bret Hart, Virgil, British Bulldog and Roddy Piper. The Scot wants to start the match with Flair, but he doesn't do it and just takes a cheap shot. Flair eventually gets in against Bret Hart, but he immediately misses his elbow. Bret hits him with the inverted atomic drop and tags Davy Boy. Smith slingshots Flair into the corner, who takes a Flair bump. Now it's a big time power slam from Davy Boy. He tags Piper and Flair dumps in his nappy of fear. They literally slap the shit out of each other whilst the roof of the building sounds like it's about to fall off. Flair manages to scramble away and tags out. Davy Boy is literally dismantling the team on his own. The British Bulldog has Mounty covered who isn't the legal man. Flair flies off the top with a shot on the Bulldog and somehow that's enough to pin him. Hot Rod's going nuts but the heels gang up on him. Flair gives him a snap mirror into a knee drop and spits at Virgil. Out of nowhere Roddy gets the figure four on Flair. DBRC saves him and Flair tags him. Flair is very active in this match. He has a slap off with Virgil next. Virgil's able to win that one and back body drop Flair. Flair asks for a timeout and tags out. Warlord is pinned under strange circumstances. Virgil's somehow hanging in there despite Flair cheating of his pins. 
Piper and Flair fight again with Piper no selling his strikes. He stops him with a poke to the eye. The match breaks down and Flair is thrown from the top. Flair is sent into the corner but completely rolls out of the ring. And then randomly the bell rings. The referee has DQ'd both teams. Except for one man who is somehow Ric Flair. What a really strange outcome. Guessing this is leading to some sort of angle. It was alright, a bit long without a good payoff. It's a C. Match 9, Madison Square Garden Show. Nature Boy Ric Flair vs The Hulkster Hulk Hogan. Now I believe the reason this match is happening out of the blue is that it's like a monthly supercard that eventually died out due to pay-per-views taking over. And basically, Ric Flair cost Hogan his belt at Survivor Series. He certainly hasn't been feuding with Hogan at this point, but to this Hawk's knowledge, this is the first time these two faced off. Hogan chases Flair out of the ring. It's done so Flair can get the advantage in the ring. Hogan makes a comeback. The crowd noise is insane here. Flair smashes into the turnbuckle and takes a flare bump. Hogan hits six punches in the corner as Flair takes a second flare bump. Back on their feet, Hogan blocks a strike and clotheslines Flair and sends him from the ring. Hogan and Flair fight around the ring like something out of TNA. Big suplex from Hogan on the outside. Hogan keeps smacking and knocks him through the barriers. Nothing's happening and they come back to the ring. Ric Flair back body drops Hogan, but he no-sells it. He whips Flair into the corner, but he can't quite roll over it. Flair thumbs him in the eyelid and chops at him and this causes Hogan to start hawking up. Flair rolls up the other turnbuckle and starts trying to leave the match. Hogan brings him back to the ring. Flair thinks he's dropped Hogan across the ropes, but he no-sells this. I'm not sure Hogan's even left his feet in this match. He throws Flair from the top rope. There's the big boot from the Hulkster and the leg drop follows. Flair gets his foot on the rope, but the ref counts to three anyway. Then he changes his mind and the match continues. Flair gets Hogan down for the first time as Mr. Perfect appears to distract the referee. They keep spamming the Hulkster's leg into the ring pole. Hogan is now well and truly down. Ric Flair does the knee drop to Hogan's leg. Flair has the figure four locked in. Perfect also helps and holds Flair's arms. Hogan summons the power of the Hawkamaniacs and turns the move over. Mr. Perfect hands Flair brass knuckles which Flair puts to good use. The ref makes the count and it's the three. Flair starts celebrating and bending over with happiness, but that reveals the knuckles in his knickers. The ref goes nuts at Flair and the crowd are loving it. Suddenly Hogan's alive again. He throws Flair out of the ring and then an announcement is made that Hogan has won the match by DQ. I guess it wouldn't be a Hogan match without a dodgy finish. It was alright, the crowd reactions made it more than it was. This one's a C. It was at this point that I finished editing the video, but then I realised I haven't finished. Because I missed match 10. Man, this is disheartening. But I couldn't leave you all hanging and leave out a match with Headbanger Thrasher. You'd all come throwing bricks through my window tonight. Everyone wants to see that. So match 10, Superstars, Headbanger Thrasher versus Ric Flair with Mr. Perfect. They give us a bit more story about the belt being distorted. Apparently WWF management are punishing Flair because he didn't win the belt in their company. Flair slaps Jobber Thrash straight away. Seemed a bit uncalled for. It's a very slow beating from Flair. I'm not sure what this poor jobber has done to anger Flair, but he beats him up on the outside. The jobber can't even make it back to the ring as he's dropped across the ropes. Thrasher keeps kicking out of pins. Piper's on commentary egging Thrasher on. Eventually Flair hits the back suplex and applies the figure four and that's over. He's turning up the heel character work, so it's a C. Match 11, Superstars, Ric Flair with Mr. Perfect versus Larry Luden. Love how they're still blurring out the belt. Can't believe this is still going on. I guess you've got to try and just pretend these squash matches didn't happen, otherwise any Ring of the Hawk competitor from the early 90s is going to struggle for a good grade. It's just how things were back then. The backdrop hits, Flair struts, which we haven't actually really seen much in this run, and he takes his distorted belt and places it on the jobber to pin him. Whatever, it's a D. Let's get on to some big hitting matches now. Match 12, Primetime Wrestling, Ric Flair with Mr. Perfect. Flair stares at the female ring announcer for an uncomfortable amount of time, and he takes on HBK Shawn Michaels. It's Michaels with the first knockdown with a shoulder block and a headlock takeover. HBK stays in control with more basic offense. Michaels dodges an attack in the corner and dives off the top into a sunset flip, just the two. Ric Flair gets annoyed and slaps Michaels who slaps him back harder. Michaels almost makes a fatal mistake with 10 punches in the corner. This of course leads to Flair trying to smash his nuts, but Michaels has an answer for that. HBK suplexes him back into the ring. The match almost turns to an eyelid poke, but seconds later Michaels back body drops him. Flair rolls out the ring as we go to an advert break. As we come back, Michaels tries a sunset flip into the ring, but he's punched down. He takes a very funny looking flare bump. Michaels flips out of the backdrop attempt and hits a drop kick. Mr. Perfect trips him up so Flair can do a knee drop. 
Michaels throws Flair off the top, and there's the super kick, not yet the sweet chin music. No cover is made, instead Michaels dives from the top with a fist drop, just a two count. Flair is sent out the ring, so Michaels tries to dive on him, but Perfect drags his friend out the way. Ric Flair spends ages arguing with the referee, he doesn't want Michaels counted out, or maybe he just wants to let Perfect interfere. Janetti runs Perfect off. After a very long time, Marty rolls Sean into the ring. Flair immediately pins him with his feet on the ropes. They make a big deal out of Sean being unconscious. Pretty cool match, and Flair really lets Sean get a lot in considering it was 1991. A cool watch, it's a B. Match 13, WWF at MSG, again. Ric Flair with Mr. Perfect versus Hulk Hogan, again. Why not put it on pay-per-view instead? The bell sounds and Perfect is still in the ring. He avoids the double clothesline. Hulk's does on the warpath. He back body drops Flair, robe and all. Hogan is trying to turn the heat up for this match by choking with tape. Flair gets beaten up around the ring and Flair bumps to the floor. The Hulkster is no-selling everything and anything. Back in the ring, Hogan tries to big boot Flair out of it, but he can't get through the ropes. We're outside again. Hogan back suplexes Flair on the floor. Flair spent most of this match falling out of the ring. It starts going the same way as the last match. Perfect causes a distraction so they can start working over Hogan's leg. But this time, Perfect uses a steel chair on it. Hogan manages to kick Flair away from the figure four. Not once, not twice, but thrice, and it sure wasn't nice. Hogan dumps Flair off the top rope. Now Hogan steals a page out of Flair's book now, smashing his leg into the post. It's the Hulkster with a knee breaker and he puts on the figure four. Flair jabs the referee in the eye. Perfect runs in the ring and for some reason Hogan small packages him. In all the chaos, Flair has the brass knuckles again. Once again, he smacks Hogan in his big bold head. This time Hogan kicks out too. He didn't smack him hard enough. Hogan hawks up. He scores with a big boot, but he can't score the leg drop as Perfect saves Flair. Hogan smashes Flair into the ring pole and the ref rings the bell. Apparently it's a count out and Hogan has won again. Although I'm not sure the ref even did a 10 count. I was only able to count to 8 in the time as Flair is out of the ring. So a bit screwed up as usual. It was almost the exact same as their month earlier. This one's a D. Match 14, Royal Rumble match 1992 for the WWF title. He enters pretty early at number 3, so it's not looking good. I'm going to try and keep the highlights brief here because there's a lot of them and WWF have got more vicious over their pay-per-views. He enters with just the British Bulldog in the ring. It doesn't exactly start well for Flair and he's Gorilla Press Slam straight away. The ring starts filling up, nobody's leaving. Around the 22 minute mark, Flair scores his first elimination, throwing Davy Boy out the ring. And seconds later, the tornado misses a punch and Flair throws him out too. The ring empties and Flair's left alone with the boss man. He promptly throws himself out of the ring, it looks a bit silly. Flair is alone in the ring and he takes a flare bump. But the breather doesn't last long because Piper is the next man in. It's all too much for Flair who dumps in his nappy and leaves the ring. Piper basically kills him until the next man comes out. These two have the greatest chemistry I've ever seen in wrestling. I could watch them wrestle for hours. Flair spends the rest of the rumble just somehow surviving. I was worried when Hogan entered and made a beeline straight for Flair. Even late into the match, Flair and Piper are still going nose to nose. We come down to the final four, which is Sid Justice, Hogan, Flair and Savage. Flair sort of smashes into Sid, which causes Savage to get eliminated. The Hulkster almost smacks Flair out, but he's too distracted and Sid Justice eliminates the Hulkster. Hogan's a bad loser and tries to drag Sid out the ring. Flair wakes up and throws Sid out. Flair is the winner and is called the undisputed heavyweight champion. Ric Flair lasted this match for 60 minutes, eliminated four people and won the title. He describes it as the greatest moment of his life. It's an A from the Hawk, can't go wrong. Match 15, tag match, Saturday night's main event, Ric Flair and The Undertaker take on Sid Justice and Hulk Hogan. They are tag team partners who don't get on. Flair is scared to lock up with Sid. He takes his eyes instead. Justice quickly throws Flair overhead with one arm. He follows out of a hip toss and Flair leaves. Hogan's in now and he copies exactly what Sid just did. The Undertaker storms the ring but it doesn't go much better for him. Flair eventually rushes the ring but the Hawk slams him a couple of times. Eventually Flair and Taker double clothesline Justice down. They also double atomic drop him. Does anyone else find the image of these two contrasting characters working together pretty hilarious? Hogan stops the double teaming and him and Sid do a double big boot to Flair. I'm shocked by how much of a coherent team Flair and Undertaker make. Hogan's knee randomly gives in which Flair zones in on. The figure four is locked in. Sid turns his back on Hogan and he has to fight it off on his own. He's Hogan, I'm sure he'll be fine. He throws Ric Flair from the top. It turns into a handicap match while Sid looks unconfused or perhaps constipated. Sid decides to leave. For completely no reason, Flair throws the ref down in this DQ finish. Well, that was completely dumb. Why would they get DQ'd when they were clearly about to win? 
Flair and Taker are destroyed by Brutus Beefcake and the Hulkster after the match. A really long match where Flair looked like an absolute fool. I did enjoy seeing him and Undertaker being tag team partners who could get on. It's a D. Match 16 tag match, WWF on MSG. Sid Vicious teams up with Ric Flair to take on Hulk Hogan. Sorry, Hulk Hogan. A lot of people have been getting on me in the comments about that one. I'm sorry, it's how I pronounced it since I was a little one. And he teams up with Roddy Piper. We get to watch Piper and Flair again, which can never be a bad thing. Piper slaps Flair down and he collapses. The pace suddenly quickens, so in typical Flair fashion, he bails from the ring. Flair uses the full nine count. Back in the ring, Piper tries 10 punches in the corner. He no-sells being dropped on his nutsack and pokes Flair in his eye. At this point, I'm starting to think Piper doesn't even have one. A nutsack, that is. A nutsack, that is, not an eyelid. Flair is back body dropped and pinballed between Piper and Hogan. But I can tell you, Hogan hits the big boot and the leg drop, but there's no ref. Sid hits Hogan with the title belt. Hogan kicks out the pin. I have no idea about the ending of this one. It looks like Hogan wins with a punch due to the camera cutting at a dumb time. Looked like a fun match with a bad ending. I'd shove it a C. Match 17, WrestleMania 8. It gets a bit weird here because Flair was supposed to defend against Hogan, but it was changed quite late on. There's a number of reasons behind the change, but the most commonly accepted reason is that Flair and Hogan had already faced off a lot of times on house shows leading up to Mania, and they'd not been a draw. So instead, we get this match for the WWF title. And it's in the middle of the show, despite being for the title. Flair the champion with Mr. Perfect versus Macho Man Randy Savage. Savage chases Flair at the ramp. Perfect drags Savage away, which allows Flair to climb into the ring. This advantage doesn't help Flair at all. After a while, Flair manages to backdrop him out of the ring. Flair rams him into the ring apron and tries to take the cat out win. That doesn't work. Now it's a big vertical suplex on the nature boy for a two. The back suplex gets another two. Flair slowly works him over for ages with the crowd slowly building with anticipation. The savage comeback eventually happens and he hits a net breaker for a double down. When they get up, Flair is quickly back down, being thrown from the top. Flair is now well and truly dumping in his red nappy. He rolls out the ring and climbs up the other turnbuckle, trying a dive, but he's countered with a smack. Savage gets a two from that, which the crowd loudly boo. Randy Savage sends Flair for the ring and leaps from the top with an axe handle. Then Savage suplexes Flair on the outside. I wish crowds were this vocal nowadays. Macho Man axe handles him in the ring again. Yet another two, and yet again the crowd loudly boo. He slams Flair and it might be time for the elbow. Savage connects. But no, Mr. Perfect breaks up the pin. The ref gets involved as Savage attacks Flair, which causes a ref bump. Flair has the brass knuckles and he punches Savage in the face, but no, Savage kicks out. Flair goes nuts with chokes and punches. Perfect also hits Savage with a chair. And here comes the figure four. Savage is in the hold for ages. But no, the move gets reversed. Macho almost wins with a small package. Flair starts getting distracted by Miss Elizabeth at ringside. Out of nowhere, Macho Man punches Flair once and rolls him up for the free with a little assistance from Flair's nappy. After the match, Ric Flair forces a kiss on Elizabeth, who beats him to the mat. Flair's a bad loser and keeps trying to attack Macho whilst he's surrounded by geeks. Ah, uh, I really think the crowd made this match. It's hard judging it from a modern perspective. I'd heard a lot about this match and I thought it was going to be better. I honestly don't really think it's an A. But then when you've got the crowd reacting like that, it has to be an A. It's a controversial B for me. I did get a little bit bored. Match 18 superstars, Ric Flair with Mr. Perfect versus Ron Come on Head. Ric Flair starts with a takeover and then backs him into the corner of a clean break. Man, Ronnie has a smaller head than the Hawk. Ric Flair chops him down while Mr. Perfect for some reason screams, Get up, Savage! Flair drops old Ronnie on his ankle and taps him out with the figure four. All these jobber matches are literally the same. It's an S. Boring. Match 19, Wrestling Challenge. It's Jim Powers yet again. What was he, Ric Flair's favourite jobber? He takes on Flair with Perfect. Flair starts a headlock takeover. Powers quickly gets him off. Flair with yet another takedown and he keeps yanking on Powers' arm. Powers tries to use his powers to quicken the pace, but he's thrown from the ring. Perfect smacks him out with something. Straight away, Flair puts on the figure four. Something rare happens though. Powers has his shoulders down, so he's pinned. A complete nothing of a match. It's a real shover. Match 20, Superstars. Ric Flair with Perfect versus Sergeant Slaughter. Okay, surely this won't be a complete squash. Slaughter copies Flair to begin with. Flair and Slaughter both smash into each other and surprisingly Slaughter's the one who goes down. Slaughter gets straight back up and throws Rick through the air. There's a long pause to this match because there's so many people joining ringside. On the restart, another big slam for Slaughter. Flair responds with an Irish whip which sends Slaughter out of the ring. He comes back to the ring with a big wind up punch. Big bat body drop from Slaughter, he's in full control. Just a two for the Sarge. Flair leaves the ring for a bit, Slaughter suplexes him back to it. Flair's quickly back on the outside again after that. 
Once again, Slaughter throws him out of the ring. Flair pokes him in the eyelid to stop his offense. Weird moment now. It looks like Flair tries to catapult Slaughter into the corner, but they can't manage it. But they can't manage it. Flair puts on a Boston Crab instead for like a second. Once again, Flair sends Slaughter into the corner and he gets stuck on the top rope. The ref is distracted and the Mountie shocks Slaughter time and time again with a cattle prod. That's how this one ends. A good competitive match, but a bit botchy. It's a D. Match 21, Wrestling Challenge. Ric Flair with Perfect versus Jason Knight, who makes the girls fight. Flair starts with the elbow to the head. Lots of wooing in the crowd tonight. Can anyone else hear that? Now it's a snap mirror into a knee drop. This job is useless. He's practically knocked out already. The match is so boring they cut to a Ric Flair promo during the actual match. He threatens Randy Savage and says he'll get his belt back. Back suplex into the figure four and it's over in record time. This is back when squash mashes were real squash smashes. Fuck the job of getting in a single punch. They're here to do the J-O-B, not look good. It's an S. At this point, I got pissed off and wondered what the hell was going on. It turns out between losing the title to Savage and his next proper match, it was over four months. So fuck it. I'm not watching any more two minute squash matches. It's a complete waste of the Hawks time. Match 22, SummerSlam Spectacular. El Matador, Tito Santana versus Ric Flair. Not sure what this event is about, but these two did it right last time, so no problem watching another clash. Basically, for some reason, Ric Flair isn't booked at SummerSlam 1992, and we get this instead. I guess it's like the pre-show. So no title rematch for Flair. Mr. Perfect takes ages deciding if he fancies cheating or not whilst he pulls a cheeky face to the camera. He does it eventually with Flair distracting the ref. After a snap mirror and a knee drop, Santana fights back, but he gets an elbow to the face for his troubles. Santana drop toe holds him, and look how effortlessly he uses Ric Flair's figure four on him. Flair makes the ropes. Flair cowers in the corner, but Tito drags him away and drops him to the mat. And once again, Santana puts on the figure four. Yet again, Flair escapes. Flair really looks like he's met his match here. Then there's a meeting of the minds, and Flair takes the Flair bump. Thought he was going to go straight into Tito's nutsack then. We come back from an advert break with Santana turning the figure four into a pin for a two. Flair tries to dive, but of course he gets thrown. I'm still waiting for him to reverse somebody on that spot. Back body drop on Flair now, and then there's a massive flying forearm. It should be over, but Perfect saves Flair. Love this next bit. Tito is distracted and Flair tries to pin him, but Tito turns that into a pin of his own for yet another two. Flair's arguing with the ref, and he's almost rolled up again. Santana punches him ten times in the corner without getting his dick slapped. This match is full of surprises. Flair rolls out to the apron where he gets a clothesline. Tito suplexes him back to the ring. Again a two. Big cross body from Tito now, the best match in ages. Perfect pulls Santana down and Flair distracts the ref so Perfect can use a chair on him. And he ain't sitting down. It's time for the figure four. He holds on for ages, but eventually succumbs to it. I enjoyed that one. For some reason, I preferred it to the Macho Man match, and I'm going to get some hate for saying that. It's an A from the Hawk for this 1992 match. Now, whilst Flair didn't have a match at SummerSlam, he did interfere and attack Savage, which seemed like a strange choice. Just let them have a match, for God's sake. Match 23, Primetime Wrestling. So it's basically a taped house show. WWF title match, Ric Flair with Mr. Perfect versus the champion Macho Man. There you go, ask and you shall receive. Same goes for a punch to the gut. So now he gets a title match, but it's not on a proper show. We have to include this one, really, don't we? Flair is desperate to get his title back, and he forces Savage to bail from the ring. Savage is looking really cautious. I believe he's selling his leg. Lots and lots of pacing around. Flair finally sweeps the leg out, but he's unable to apply the figure four. Macho finally manages a move when he gorilla press slams Flair, but I think he did his leg in there. Then we get a double down, even though barely anything's happened at this point. Flair tries to improve on that with a delayed vertical suplex. This match is incredibly slow. It's a back suplex now. He puts on a half Boston with Match immediately making the ropes. Macho gets a lucky roll up, but just like all these matches, Perfect is getting involved from the outside. Flair throws Match out of the ring. Seems like a waste of time as Match scrambles straight back into the ring. Now the Macho Man is fired up and he back body drops and clotheslines Flair out of the ring. Suplex on the outside of the ring now. Macho wants to use a steel chair, which the ref talks him down from. The Macho Man comes back into the ring for big double axe. Razor Raymond comes stomping out. Something new from Flair now is a drop kick, which sends Macho out the ring. It turns out that Scott Hall also hates Macho and he assaults on his leg. That thing must be practically hanging off at this point. Finally, Ric Flair puts on the figure four. Surely that's got to be it. The deck is really stacked against the Macho Man. This one must set a record for the longest amount of time someone's lasted in the figure four. After about two minutes, Macho has passed out and the ref counts three of him still in the hold. Flair is once again the World Wrestling Federation Champion. Now surprisingly, Flair dropped the title to Bret Hart on a house show not long after. Well, that was pointless. 
Match 24, Survivor Series 1992, tag match. That feels like a rare thing on this run. It's Razor Raymond and Ric Flair taking on Macho Man, Randy Savage and Mr. Perfect. Basically, this was originally Ultimate Warrior's spot, but when he left WWF, Perfect took his place. Our guy doesn't start this match anyway. Perfect chops Flair on the apron, which seems to light a fire up under his nappy, and they will now square off. Perfect with his first big move, a back body drop. A bunch of clotheslines follow. Flair tries to roll to safety, but it's not safe because Macho smacks him. Macho's in now with a double axe. Flair gets destroyed for a bit before tagging Razor back in. Flair gets back into the match a bit later on. He immediately throws Savage out of the ring. When he returns, he tries several times to get the pin, which isn't good enough. Big knee drop now, which brings Perfect in. Flair uses that as an opportunity to switch places with Razor. Perfect gets frustrated and almost bails from the match entirely. Flair honestly is looking like the weak link of this team. Macho almost sneaks a pin on him. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Macho struggles to throw Flair from the top. It's a real struggle here, but you manage it. Perfect gives Flair a knee lift, which Flair takes a great... Perfect gives Flair a knee lift, with Flair taking the greatest bump of this video. Not seen that as much as I would have expected. Ric Flair throws a tantrum and hits Macho with a steel chair on the outside. For the second time in this match, Perfect back body drops Flair. Then there's a ref bump. There's just constant shenanigans now. Perfect has it won twice with the Perfect Plex, but these referees have lost their minds. The refs have lost full control and DQ our guy, so they've lost them. There's a big brawl after the match with Perfect hitting Flair with a chair multiple times. Not much to say really, a D I guess. Match 25, Monday Night Raw, Episode 2. El Matador will once again face Ric Flair. Never expected him to have the most matches with Flair on this video. El Matador starts with the headlock takeovers. Flair's meant to be the heel, but the crowd are loudly cheering him. Matador throws some drop kicks and goes back to the takeovers. When we come back from the advert break, Flair pushes Matador away from the corner and executes a jackknife cover for a two. Flair drops the knee twice now. It doesn't do much and he's back body dropped. Ric Flair thumbs him in the eyelid to try and stop him, but as usual, Flair gets thrown off the top rope. Santana whips Flair out the ring and on the outside does a clothesline from hell. Another back body drop now. Just like last time, he hits the diving forearm, but he doesn't make a pin because he's an idiot. Out the ring, Matador flies. Mr. Perfect and Ric Flair start brawling. The match is thrown out or something. It's just an S, not good enough. That fight with Mr. Perfect seemed to anger Flair so much that he says he'll put his career on the line against Mr. Perfect. It's loser leaves town, even though no one forced him into this scenario. Match 26, Royal Rumble 1993 match. Flair must be one of the most unlucky men in Royal Rumble history because this time he's drawn number one. He doesn't seem to be sweating it anyway. Bob Buckland joins number two. He wants to shake Flair's hand, but instead Flair brushes his hair back. This Bob Backlund's an interested looking fellow, isn't he? Bob really gets the better of Flair time and time again as he dances around the ring of happiness. Flair gets his eyelashes to try and calm him down. Backlund turns it around with a bat body drop and the reverse atomic drop. The next man out is Papa Shango. Flair eliminates him almost straight away. He almost gets Bob Backlund out too. Ted DiBiase is next in. He works with Flair to try and get Backlund out. Now it's the nasty boy. He gives Flair and DiBiase a meeting of the minds. He thinks he's thrown Flair out of the ring, but he hasn't, because as established, he's a bit dim. Nothing really happens to Flair for a while now, he just kind of exists in the match. That is until Mr. Perfect enters the rumble and makes a beeline straight for Flair. The crowd are going nuts. He hits Flair with a knee lift and a bunch of strikes. Like a moron, Flair decides to climb to the top rope. Also like a moron, Mr. Perfect decides to throw Flair into the ring rather than out of it. None of Flair's offense is having any effect on the perfect one. Mr. Perfect ducks a chop and sends Flair out the ring and he's gone. The audience going berserk over this elimination. Just one elimination for Flair, so it's D. Match 27, final match, Monday Night Raw. Loser leaves the WWF. Imagine if I was just swerving you all here and Flair actually wins this one. Yeah, I'm definitely going to pull that on one of these videos. Ric Flair versus Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect gives him a drop toe hold and a slap. Flair is livid and Perfect is stealing his taunts. Flair has a team talk with Bobby Heenan. It doesn't help him. Flair and Perfect have a chop off which leads to a Flair bump. Perfect keeps boxing him square in the jaw. They head outside the ring where Flair picks up this old wooden chair. He thinks it's a steel one but it won't fold for him. And what a save that is from the referee to stop Flair from using it. Later Perfect tries to copy the Flair rolling out the ring spot. Probably wouldn't try that one again Perfect. Flair keeps trying pins of his feet on the ropes. It's not working for him. Not long after Flair bounces out the corner straight into a Perfect fist. He tries the jackknife cover, but that's just a two. Now it's a test of strength with a backslide. Perfect wins, but it's only a two. Flair almost wins the match now of his own roll-up, and then he takes a powder on the outside. 
Perfect brings him back to the ring the hard way. The match almost ends in a botch. It looks like Perfect can't decide if he's going for a high knee or a sleeper. It knocks the stuffing out of the crowd a bit. We do get a figure four in Ric Flair's final match. I thought we weren't going to see one. He escapes anyway. Flair starts getting desperate and gets the brass knuckles. He manages to smack Perfect without the ref seeing. For some reason, he doesn't bother making the pin. By the time he does make the pin, Perfect has his foot on the rope. Mr. Perfect's busted open now. He starts hawking up. Back body drops and smacks from the Perfect one. Flair tries to dive on him, but Perfect smacks him out of the air, and he sure didn't care. Flair resorts to more pins of his feet on the ropes. Mr. Perfect rolls him back and almost gets the pin himself. And there it is, the Perfect Plex for the three. Great match, the most enjoyable match for ages. Heenan on commentary swears and throws the headset away. The perfect way to end the video, for game over, it's an A. Flair left the WWF because he felt that he wasn't being pushed as the guy and instead had mid-card feuds. He's kind of right, yeah he had the belt twice but he was never the main man. And both his title reigns were bad, so I do get where he's coming from and why he went home to the WCW. After all that, all that's left to do is shove Flair a final grade to see if he's good enough to do the J.O.B. on the regular Hawks season 3. Remember, we're judging this by early 90s standards, which is always going to be difficult. I can certainly see what people mean when they say that most of Ric Flair's matches are the same. What I learned from this video is how Flair controls the crowd. Everything has a reason behind it and he gets a lot out of a little. I also feel like I get how awesome Roddy Piper is now. I'm sorry, I didn't grow up during the generation where he was amazing. I get it now. The current champions are the Hardy Boys and it's just so difficult to compare these two runs. It's chalk and cheese. Ultimately, what's going to swing it for me is... Matt Hardy literally reinvented his character and made a dead company relevant again for a few months. And I'm sorry, as great as Flair was, he didn't do anything in the WWF that could be called revolutionary. So he's not the champion, it's a second place. And if you don't agree with that, I'll punch you in the face.